everybody. Hi, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. I wanted to talk to you today about doing a practice to get ready for the project that we're going to do starting July 6, 2020, and it's a Christmas in July. We're going to make the Warmest Wishes applique quilt using a scan and cut and simply applique. This is a wall hanging from Urban Elements and I will link to it below. This is really cute. There, now you can buy it in two separate ways. You can get the just the paper pattern that comes like this and then you can also purchase it with the pre-cut, I hope I don't drop them everywhere, pre-cut applique pieces. So either way you buy it doesn't matter. I'm going to make both of them so that way you'll know uh, how to do the one that you make. So I've had a lot of questions come in in the form of email and you know on Facebook and whatnot. We have a very supportive Facebook group for Power Tools with Thread. If you're interested, please jump over. We'd love to have you. Mostly quilting and machine embroidery, mixture of the two, which is kind of what we're doing here. What I wanted to do was talk to you a little bit about how this whole thing works. Because even some of you who have watched my videos for a long time, you know, you say, okay, this is great. I'm going to learn how to do this with you. I think it's important that you understand kind of the nerdiness behind it so that you can no longer look at applique quilts in the same way ever again. There is so much neat technology that's out there that if you want to make it the old fashioned way, that's great. I'm lean more toward using today's technology and tools to make it much faster so that I can make another one. It's a lot of fun to me to be able to do that. And you do not have to be a computer person at all in order to be able to do what I'm about to show you. You do need to have a Windows PC. If you're going to use Simply Applique, it will not work on a Mac. And if you have a Windows module installed on a Mac, we're not sure that that will work either. So I will also link to a pretty inexpensive Windows PC down below in this video and it'll work just fine. Let's talk about the anatomy of an image. Anyone who has played with Photoshop or PaintShop Pro or GIMP, you know that images are made in layers and layers make up, and I'm talking about the images that you find out on the web. So for example, I've got a really simple little image that I got. We're going to do this one today. I'm going to link to this one below as well. And I scanned it into the scan and cut and it looks very, very simple. When you're going to make an applique quilt and let's say you don't have a pattern that comes out of a book or it's not a pre uh, a pre-made pattern for applique but you find something on the web that you want to make there's a few things that you have to do to it to make sure that it's going to work out to be what you want so I went ahead and scanned this in in the scan and cut and come to find out it's got a bunch of layers in it that the machine picked up on that you don't see on the screen and your printer didn't see because the printer printed it out just fine when you are looking at making applique files from paper and that's what this is all about it's about making applique embroidery applique files from paper so remember I showed you my pretty little cute flower here's what that turned out like didn't that come out just precious and I could certainly have done the face on the center yellow I just threw this together to give you guys an example to show you what this looks like so for the cut files it came out just fine this is just so simple but when I first scanned this in what I discovered was the scan and cut thinks that the flower petals and the stem are all one object and so it the outline came here and stopped and then went down when you have images that connect directly like this you're gonna have to do a little bit of work not a lot <laughs> I wouldn't do it if it was a lot of work <laughs> but you're gonna have to do a little bit of work to recreate the files by tracing them onto paper so that you can separate them now one of the beauties of the scan and cut is that if you have files that have multiples so see how there's two leaves on the original image well I only needed to trace it once 
and then in the scan and cut I did a copy and paste and created two. Let me get back to the layers. When I scanned in this original document and I went to move it around, underneath the leaves there were pieces of other layers under there that the scan and cut saw that I didn't and my printer didn't. You're going to want to clean up the junk on the mat. That's what I call those other little things that are junk on the mat. You're going to want to clean those up in the scan and cut before you do any cutting because you don't want to cut out those little pieces. I had shown y'all an owl I had made from the Forest Friends applique. Now this particular pattern, here's the original. This is the owl that I had made. And on the back of the owl, the author has already separated out the individual pieces for the applique and this is meant for you to trace onto heat and bond well if you have a pattern like this you want to make sure you need to close up those little dotted lines because the scan and cut doesn't recognize that that's really supposed to be a solid line so what I did was I made a copy of the back page I took a marker and I just closed in the lines wherever it was dotted I closed them up and it came out just perfect. If you do not have a scan and cut and you have the Cricut or the Silhouette and you want to make a digital image out of it there is a way for you to print a calibration page and then calibrate it with your phone and take a picture of the image with your phone and upload it. That's why I have a scan and cut. I used to have a Silhouette and I sold it. I will link to a good scan and cut below that you can get Amazon Prime. It'll work just fine. Those of you that have the older versions of the Scan and Cut, maybe you have the CM model, an older version, this will work. If you have a CM model Scan and Cut, I have a video playlist of Scan and Cut videos on my channel. Just go to my channel and go to videos and then in the videos along that menu there's a thing that says playlist. Click on that and look for the Scan and Cut ones and I have uh, done several videos using the CM models so that'll give you an idea of how to work those buttons if you get lost but the first thing I wanted to do now was go through the process of how to scan this in and how to cut out fabric that's all we're going to do in this video and then in the next video I will go ahead and show you how we use simply applique to stitch all of this down so let's get started for our flower I have backed a piece of green batik with heat and bond light and I'm going to use pink for the petals and yellow for the face. On your scan and cut mats you're going to want to use the standard mat and that is the one that's in purple. If you have the scan and cut CM models the 350 or the 650 there will be an arrow at either end and it doesn't matter which way you feed in the mat into the machine but on the DX models the 225 the 125 the 230 blah 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 whichever ones it has only one arrow and it matters which way you put in the mat now there's discussion about whether you need a fabric support sheet or not the fabric support sheet is like a very very sticky piece of contact paper pretty much is clear contact paper and if you look back on any of my other videos in the Scan and Cut, you'll see me using it or applying one on or something like that. But it makes your mat very tacky. Because I bought the 225, it came with a light tack mat. Let me get it. Light tack, low tack is what they call it. And that one is teal. So it'll have the teal band on it and it'll tell you right here, low tack adhesive mat. I use this rarely. I, I don't use this if you were a paper crafter this is probably what you would use but if you're a fabric crafter like me I'm not a paper crafter any way shape or form if you're a fabric crafter like me I've seen videos like Terry Maffitt has used this and she only tapes she doesn't use the fabric support sheet and she only tapes her fabric pieces to the mat using like Kimberbell embroidery tape uh, the paper tape just on the corners to hold the fabric in place. I have never been very successful doing that and I suspect it's because of the humidity of where I live. Very very humid here, very warm and so and my sewing room is humid because this is an old back patio. I think you would probably want to do a test 
and see how it's going to work for you. I have heard you can actually buy clear contact paper and use it and it'll stick two, three, four times, you know, however much. It's very inexpensive to replace. If your mat gets, if the fabric support sheet gets cut a little bit during, not a big deal. It's, you know, and if you make the mistake of cutting through your mat, just slap some duct tape on the back and it'll be good as new. There's no need to continually replace these mats. As far as cleaning them, I have heard a lot of people talk about using baby wipes without like lanolin or any kind of lotion or oil in them. Baby wipes are kind of hard to come by. We're in the middle of the COVID thing right now, so and people don't like going out and going shopping and they're impossible to find anywhere. This is one of those microfiber towels that is used for computers or phone screens or your glasses. It's It doesn't have a nap to it at all. And I just wet it with water and go after this, this sheet. I just did it, I just cleaned it. And you let it dry and you know, it works great. One of the things that you don't necessarily need but you might want is a scanning mat. A scanning mat comes with a clear cover. It's solid white. And it comes with a clear cover that you will take your image that you want to make an applique out of and you just slip it in here like this. If I did not have a scanning mat, I would use a low tack mat. But what if there's like some thread or whatever kind of stuck on here or something, some dust, some cat or dog fur or whatever, the machine will pick that up. And so that's the beauty of the scanning mat, is you can make sure that the machine isn't going to pick up anything that you don't want to because it's been covered. So that, it's just handy to have. Alright, let's turn on the scan and cut and get started. When you first turn on your scan and cut, it's going to have that pretty screen making some pictures or whatever of projects you can do with it. Just touch it. And it says the carriage will move into the initial position. Keep your hands away. Okay. So this is the basic home screen. Scan and Cut does two things. It scans and it cuts, just like the name implies. So we're going to scan right now, and then afterwards we're going to get rid of the scan pattern, and then we're going to cut. It's a little freaky when it tells you, is it okay to delete this? And you're not deleting the pattern out of the memory. You're just deleting the pattern out of the scan. So just kind of keep that in mind. And if you ever get lost, you can always hit this home button and you'll go back. And then this is your load and unload button and there's a pause. The first thing I want to do is I want to go to scan. Now, you can either scan something and cut it right away. You can scan to cut data, which means it's going to turn it into a digital file that you will use later. Or you can scan it to a USB. So we want to scan to cut data. If your start button is grayed out, you need to load your mat. I'm positioning the mat. There's a couple of little edges right here that you, it just fits in there perfect. I'm also using the gold top blade that is the, the lightweight fabric blade and that's perfect for what we need. So once I have the mat placed properly, I'm going to hit the load button and it's going to kind of bring it in real slow and initialize it the way it wants and then we're ready to start. All done. Once your image has been scanned in, you're going to see the image that itself, and then you're going to have some buttons here. You have three highlighted buttons. This one is outline only. This one is inside outside. And then this one is for regions if you had color. If I had used the original image that had the smiley face in the middle with an inner circle, I would want to use the inside outside. But because I have separated the image into the petals, the leaf, the stem, and this, there's the circle right there, I'm just going to get outline or the outside. I'm going to touch that. And that's all I really need and I'm going to tell it OK. I think I can do everything I want with that for scanning. So I'm going to tell it OK. And now it wants to know where do I want to save it. I can save it to the machine. I can save it to the cloud. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. That's OK, no big deal. If you accidentally touch that, 
let it do its thing click OK if you are not connected to the cloud it won't work that's alright I'm gonna hit OK again and we'll do this one more time you can save it to the machine you can save it to the cloud or you can save it to a USB I'm gonna click save to machine and it tells me that it's number 21 in the memory I'm gonna tell it OK so we're all finished with the scanning portion there's nothing else we need to do right now so I'm just gonna hit home and is it okay to delete all patterns that's like I told you before it feels a little weird but you're not deleting it out of the memory you're just deleting it out of the scan part of the scan and cut so I'm gonna tell it okay now I want to retrieve data I'm gonna hit the eject button now let's manipulate the data so remember we touched scan to cut data now we're going to retrieve the data that we did on the scan you can get it from the machine from the cloud from a USB or maybe you're cabled to a computer I'm gonna hit machine and it's the last one I scanned so if you hit the double arrow right here it will go to the last image and there it is and this is the one I want yes I'm gonna tell it okay if this is not the one you want if you accidentally touch the wrong thing if you hit the trash can you'll delete it if you don't want to delete it just hit the back arrow so I'm gonna tell it okay now there is a little bit of editing I need to do on here because I don't know if you can see that dark line right there that is the bottom of the paper in the scan map I'm gonna hit edit that's highlighted I'm going to hit the trash can to get rid of that and tell it OK. The first thing I want to do right away is to mirror the image because we have fabric side down and paper side up. So to flip all of these at one time you want to select all and this is what the button does that has the three red boxes. So if I hit select all it wants to know part of the mat or all of the mat I want to select all of the mat so now everything is highlighted on here I'm gonna tell it OK and now edit object and this is the mirror button right here with a dark side and a light triangle and you just touch that and watch everything will flip hard to see but it happened and tell it OK now you want to go back into the select all menu and unselect that button so that it's white and everything is unselected and now you can move them separately if you don't do that step when you move one they'll all move at the same time and you'll think what happened there so I need to move these pieces into the quadrant of the mat where I'm gonna put the fabric so I'm gonna put the petals right here I'm going to put the center right here and I have a long green strip of fabric that I'm going to use to make the stem and the leaves. So let me put this leaf here. Here's the stem. I want to turn the stem 90 degrees. So I've got it highlighted and I'm going to go to object edit and there are several choices of the highlighted buttons that you have right here this one you can make it larger or smaller with that arrow stretchy arrow here you can make multiples see the plus this is how you rotate any of your objects so I'm gonna to touch the rotate button and I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees and tell it okay very good now I need to make multiples of the leaf so this is the multiple button how many two okay and I'm gonna move it just over here just like this and then I'm gonna touch this and move it over here that ought to work I'm gonna tell it okay 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 select cut it's time to get the mat ready with the fabric here is my mat it has this uh, fabric support sheet on it and I have writing on my mat right here that says fabric side down 
If you have a fabric support sheet on your mat, you want to never, ever, ever put the paper side down. Okay, it's time to put the fabric on the mat. So, fabric side down. My petals are up here. The flower center is right here. I'm just kind of pressing sticking. I'm not finished. And then the long green strip is right here. I like to use a Pampered Chef scraper. It works just fine. Or you can go get one of those fancy scrapers. I'm very practical. I have a scraper in my kitchen drawer, so I used it. There. Now this is going to hold on very well. All right. Now we're ready to cut this. I'm going to put the mat back in the machine and start. It's pulling the mat in and scanning it right now. My leaves are fine on here. There we go. Perfect. That looks like that's going to cut out real good. I'm going to tell it OK. And OK. And it says, please select cut and start. Less than a minute. All done. Great. Tell it OK and eject the mat. Perfect. Let's see how we did. Oh, that came out perfect. Look at that. Very good. Look at this, y'all. Oh, fabulous. 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 This is great. Look at that. Look how perfect those came out. Well, look at that. See how easy that was? And I created that from a coloring book page. Pretty cool, huh? So I hope this video was helpful and you got a lot out of it and you're not intimidated by the buttons and the scan and cut anymore. This is just so much fun to me. I hope you guys get into this and start doing it. Y'all, it just changes the way you look at applique quilting completely. All right, you guys, we'll talk to you soon. Go scan something. <laughs> Bye.